Hey Tatians friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna sit down, chit chat, answer, and respond to comments and questions, continue discussions. I love doing these videos. It's been a few weeks since I've done these videos and it's been a while since I've filmed. Every time I say I'm going back to my Monday to Friday, life smacks me in the face. And unfortunately, life was Hurricane Ian. But I am ready to at least sit down, answer some comments, because the last time I did this was a few weeks ago, and then get back into regularly scheduled programming. So, Let's first go. things first, a little disclaimer. One, I am not an authority. I am not educated in regards to I didn't go to school, didn't get any formal training. I am a consumer and a fragrance collector. So any opinions on the fragrance world in regards to industry, formulas, things like that, is coming from an uneducated consumer, that doesn't mean that my opinion, opinion, I can't even say words, is invalid. However, you guys, some people prefer the opinion of people who work in the industry, who have formal education, and some people prefer a consumer review. So when I tell you guys my thoughts and opinions on formulas, on how things smell, and on the industry, I want you guys to know where I'm coming from. You guys have every right to believe or not believe or take my my thoughts and opinions with whatever weight you want to do. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I know what I'm talking about in relation to have any having any proper training or education. But that doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to have my opinion, but they are my opinions. Now, the other thing is, is this is going to be a chatty video. And the first part of this video is going to be a continuation with an ongoing discussion that I have. I'm not the only person to have this discussion. I'm not the first, nor will I be the last. However, I think that since this was a comment that somebody had mentioned two weeks ago, if this is your first time tuning in, I would love to let you guys know where I stand and continue this conversation because it is an important one to have. But in order for me to continue this conversation, I first have to let you know that I do not work in the industry. Uh, YouTube is my hobby. I do make a little bit of money on YouTube. I've disclosed how much money I make, not that much. And I also let you guys know that um, uh, how I disclose. In the beginning of a video, I say, hey, this was sent to me for free, or hey, I spent my money on this. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we're going back into uh, free bottles and influencers and things like that. And I think that it's always good to keep this topic on the forefront because as people watch YouTube videos and reviews and all that stuff, it's really good to understand that there are some channels that present themselves as very formal. And yes, there are people who are on YouTube who are professionals, who have worked in the industry, continue to work in the industry, or are training to work in the industry. Not all YouTubers who create fragrance videos are people who are consumers who are uneducated. And the people who decide whose opinion is worth taking at the time is you guys. So that being said, when it comes down to reviewing fragrances and talking about formulas and how things that smells and things like that, different weight will be placed on authority and also what you guys think. You guys might trust somebody who doesn't work in the industry or you guys might prefer somebody who is training or currently a perfumer. It's completely up to you guys. That being said, when we talk about fragrance content creators, whether you are true influencers or smaller channels, the idea that you guys are coming to a video format to learn about a smell it can be like, why? But for me, I feel like whether or not the person is a professional or doing it for fun, for you guys, it can be a form of information and entertainment. That being said, there are situations where the person creating the content, there has been a transaction in place. And if I've meant, and I know I've done plenty of videos talking about disclosure and uh, free bottles and things like that, I'll link all those videos below. But we're going we're gonna to continue the conversation because of this comment, and I think it's a great comment. And like I said, you guys are always feel free to hold all of, the, all of the influencers and content creators accountable, and always feel free to hold me accountable. So this comment comes on my ranking the Navitus perfumes. 
and that video, Girl George, their comment was, thanks for disclosing that this is a biased review. So far, I have yet to find one YouTube fragrance reviewer that has one bad thing to say about Navitas, so I believe no one. Now, when I did that video, they had sent me uh, samples and travel sizes, and I genuinely loved those fragrances, and I genuinely do love those fragrances. But as always, not only were those sent to me for free to try out, but I, being a content creator, get excited when other content creators get opportunities to create things. So I haven't rewatched that video, but I do think that in that video, I was talking about how I am more biased, not just because it was sent to me for free, but as a content creator, I don't know if I would have been able to remove my bias as a member of the fragrance YouTube community. And I don't think that that discredits my review of fragrances that I still wear and enjoy. But I also don't think that that discredits people thinking, I don't want to watch this because this is obviously not just a free review, but a very biased review. But I don't think that there's anything to be ashamed of or afraid of putting your biases up front and center. And I've talked about this before. I talked about this in my more recent longer video talking about fragrance influencers is that when it comes down to business affiliations and being creative directors and disclosing partnerships, I feel like fragrance content group should be proud that brands are basically trusting them with sometimes multi-million dollars of company reputation. And there is nothing gross about representing said brand, the gross thing is not disclosing. And I think you should be proud to say, I've worked hard enough and I've earned the right to be the face of this company. And I think that your subscribers, your fans, the people who have been following you from the very beginning would be excited and happy for you too, because they've probably followed you for a variety of different reasons. And one of them might be your taste in fragrance. And if your taste and fragrance have led you to a brand that you love, that you align with, and you and that brand align together and just vibe, then yeah, be like, hey, this brand I love, and I am so excited for the opportunity to be the face of this brand or to represent this brand or to work with this brand. There's nothing gross or shilly about being honest and transparent with business relationships with brands. It becomes disingenuous and illegal when you don't disclose. And I think that once certain reviewers reach that true influencer threshold, and I assume it's like 50 to 75,000 subscribers or more, when you start to get the views on your channel where you can make a living wage, and I've talked about this in that video where people say these people need to get a real job, and I say these people are bringing in more money than their day job. So obviously, um, what would you call a job? I, I, I talk about it in the video, and you can tell me how you think truly. But um, the, the issue is disclosing. Disclosing is so important. And there's nothing wrong with free bottles. There's nothing wrong with affiliate codes. There's nothing wrong with any of this stuff, as long as you're open and honest. And that's the only problem. But what I think needs to be done front and center as super important is to not shy away from letting people know where we stand with biases, especially with these specific brands. And I've mentioned it before. I am a huge fan of Francis Curjon. I love his house. I love the stuff he creates. I'm nine times out of 10 going to just generally like his things. So when I review his references, they're probably going to be positive. And I'm probably not going to be the best person to come to for an unbiased review of Francis Curjon fragrances because generally I'm going to fangirl. That doesn't mean that I'm not talking in all honesty, but that doesn't mean that I'm the best place to go to for an unbiased opinion. 
Just like with the Navitus, I was very excited for the opportunity of content creator to create fragrances with some fantastic, fabulous noses. I was genuinely giving my honest opinion, but I'm probably not the best place for an unbiased opinion. And there are certain reasons why that brand gets a lot of positive reviews in the content creator space. And although everything I have tried from the brand I have enjoyed, I haven't tried anything recently, to be completely honest, but I do know that a lot of people do hype it up for the opportunity to probably have a chance to create a fragrance with the brand. I do not know how any of that works. They have never contacted me, nor do I think they would ever, and I am totally okay with that. But, I'm a big old but, um, there are going to be more biases behind certain brands, certain releases, certain fragrances than just a free bottle. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with content creators having those biases. I think that there is something wrong when they don't let those biases be known because I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Just like getting free bottles. There's nothing wrong with free bottles as long as you disclose because legally you're supposed to. So that's talking about biased reviews. Um, Real quick, because a bunch of you guys were talking about how horrible Sunford is. Quick update: they still haven't sent that um, sent that that thing, my fragrance. It's still processing. I'm probably gonna contact them and I'll let you guys know how that goes. But Sunford is still um, not sent it. And the scent I chose was Etat Le Bread d'Orange, and it was Un Amaret. I was very excited for that one. So hopefully they will send that to me. And if they were unable to send it, like if they ran out of it, they could have contacted me, but uh, still nothing. So it's, uh, this video is being filmed October 8th. So this is great. So this is on my fragrance haul. Uh, this is from Katie Hobson. So from the first comment, did Navitas contact you too? Please don't fall for that scam. No. I don't think I'm the type of content creator that they would contact to create a, a fragrance or a fragrance line with. That's totally fine. I'm not talking bad about myself. The type of content creators that they contact are more ambitious with their channels. I'm more chill. I don't really edit that well. I don't really pronounce things that well. I really don't think I would be the best representation of the brand. And that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm totally 100% okay with that. So no, they have never contacted me, nor do I think they ever will. This is a great comment. And I forget if I talked about this in my haul video. I might have mentioned it because I remember seeing this, but I wanted to address this in this video. So this is on my uh, ranking my entire Lil Labo collection. And this is from Lucinda and they were like, unbelievable, no Lil Labo Centaur 33 or Bergamot. So I don't own those two. I like them a lot, but I haven't had a sense of urgency to purchase them. So there are some fragrances, some fragrance houses that I have a huge desire to purchase immediately. Like I need to own every fragrance from this house. I need to own as many fragrances from this house immediately, or there's certain houses that I enjoy, but I will buy when I feel the itch. I know it seems like I just buy to buy, and I've actually toyed around with the idea of not buying anything in October, just because I am burnt out from everything. Like the past 10 months, three years has been, I feel like everything is hitting me right now. And I've talked about that, but I might talk about it later. We're taking my cat to the vet today. Depending on the news, I might have to say goodbye to my cat. Um, she's been very sick and very weird. I've been at a very weird place the past few weeks. So it's been rough and I don't buy stuff for therapy. I buy things because I enjoy it. It makes me happy. And if I buy something for therapy, it might be one thing. It's not going to go out and just purchase, 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 purchase. So like when I think about specific brands that I will just add to my collection because I, I need to just add them to my collection. Lilabo is not one of them. I actually think that it would be more of these kind of niche fragrance houses that I discover and by them, I mean like I discover it's not that I'm the first person to find them, but it's my first time finding them. 
um, and then just buying like three or four. You know, that might be like when I kind of go a little ham on a fragrance. And I, I don't think that that would even be like, it might be like two bottles out of like a 10 bottle collection. I don't just buy to buy. I have to kind of fill a hole. I have to, it has to be for a YouTube video. It has to be for a reason. Uh, it could just be because, you know, I, it has been such a while since I bought something and I'd like to treat myself to a bottle of perfume because that's what I like to buy. But there's always a reason of why I purchase something and there has to be a hole in my collection. Now, with Santal 33 and also Bergamot, because those are two of the more popular culty fragrances from the House of Lalabo, I love those scents. They're beautiful, but they're not unique. And that doesn't mean that they're some of the better versions of those compositions out there. They're fantastic, but they're not unique enough to my collection, to the types of fragrances that I have and wear, to, for me to sacrifice that money to go to something else. And with La Labo, I prefer to buy in person, to be completely honest. I know city exclusives I really can't buy in person, so for their general <laughs> everyday run-of-the-mill regular lineup of La Labo fragrances, I prefer to buy them in person. And usually I have to be in a specific mood to decide what I buy. So some of the fragrances from La Labo that I have aren't like the, their, their best and aren't as good as the Antal or the Bergamot, but at the time they're what I wanted. And that's ultimately that emotion of if I'm gonna spend like almost $200 on a bottle of perfume, at the moment I'm gonna buy what I want. And that's ultimately what I do. So I've just never been right place, right time to purchase one of these fragrances, nor have I had the sense of urgency to add it to my collection, to go out of my way to buy it like online. So they're great fragrances. I'm not sitting here saying that they aren't fantastic fragrances. And yes, at some point I will add them to my collection. But La Labo is one of those houses that I have rules and stipulations about adding to my collection. And you might be like, you have that? Yes, certain houses. Raj is one of those houses, Zerjaf is one of those houses, Kirlan is one of those houses, Chanel is one of those houses. There are some houses that I just put rules in place because I collect them and I have specific reasons and rhymes and riddles that I have to solve <laughs> before I purchase a bottle. And La Labo is one of those. And because Bergamot and Santal, those compositions are beautiful. They are fantastic. They are some of the better of the house but they're not super unique to my collection that I don't feel an urgency to buy them. And usually when I'm in a La Labo location, which is one of my rules for the regular La Labo fragrances, I just usually am like, I want this random one that I, I really enjoy. And it's not as good as this other one, but right now I really want this. And that's ultimately why I end up purchasing it. Anyway, that is why I don't have Santal or the Bergamot, but they are beautiful. And at some point I will get them, probably not this year, Maybe next year, maybe, maybe not next year, I don't know. Anyway guys, we're ending the video here. I know I kind of talked weirdly on different topics, but I promise I'm, I'm going to get to a normal. I can't promise when Monday through Friday is coming back. I, I promise every time I think it's gonna get that way, something happens. Like I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna sit down for a chit chat video. And then it's like, oh, I have to take my cat to the vet. I hope she's coming home with me. So we're, we're, we'll see. We'll see. Pray for my kitty. Good thoughts, vibes, attention, whatever you guys are comfortable for my kitty. Um, we will see how she is. She's been kind of, kind of not so good the past few weeks. So we will see. But other than that, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I will see you next time.